Okay, back again one more time. This time it's going to be a very quick video. I'm just going to take uh, my initial look, show you guys the the rules. So we looked at the models over there, and now we're going to look at the rules. Uh, the rules are broken down into uh, a few sections. Me, myself, that's my cat jumping on my table there. Um, uh, I printed off my, my Kickstarter. Um, well, actually, I didn't even get the Kickstarter. I bought the Kickstarter, but afterwards, so I wasn't part of the actual Kickstarter campaign. But I print them off into uh, into several sections. The first section being the rules, and the rules, and the next section being the mission book, and then the fleet book, which have all the fleets in it. So I'll just go through it one at a time. But it doesn't come like this. It comes separated. But I bound these myself. Um, I also it comes with these cards. I cut them out, there's pieces of paper, I cut them out and I laminated them on my handy laminating machine. It comes with generic tokens, like flooding tokens, I laminated them. And then it comes with range finding tokens, so this is O, this is Orion's token. Uh, D would be Deutschland, H can be Hanover, whatever the ship is. So yeah, this is a, another one of the, this is the Lusitania card, just laminated, just to show you. It comes with these uh, critical hit markers. Uh, anytime, if you let's say you need to score a three, four, five, or six on a target, anytime you actually get a three, you the target takes one of these cards, and you just pull it from the deck. You flip it over, steering damaged, and that's what you must do. Um, now, if you need a five to hit, any five and sixes will hit, but fives will do the, the critical damage, which is a really cool way of doing it. And then there's also these order cards, which I printed off and laminated. And these are, they're very important to the game mechanics, and they let your ships do a little bit, uh, a little bit extra. So, for instance, gunnery control, as you focus on the guns, you get to reroll a dice. Damage control helps you with your repairs. Uh, more gunnery. What else do we have here? Hard turn makes ships that wouldn't normally be very maneuverable allows them to turn at the beginning of their movement instead of the end or and the end. Evasive action makes you harder to hit. I believe. Uh, let's see. There was another one there. Speed. There's one there where you can basically you can speed up so you can gain an extra inch of movement. But it comes with all this stuff you see here: the tokens, the ship cards, the the card decks, and of course the fleet books mission books so here we have the rule book and see as you can see here it's a print on command tabletop miniatures game um just a little bit of an introduction it's laid out really nice like i have a color printer and i was able to get it in color but if you don't i've seen people do it at uh, in canada they do it at staples or kinko's in the states i think that's a place where you get to get them professionally make it for you kind of here we have the showing you what the ship card does so if I take a sample ship card here, just showing you what all the things do. And we're going to get into some fun videos for myself personally. We're going to examine the different ship types and what they can do on the tabletop. Uh, but that's just showing you the breakdown of the ship card. Um, this is just an explanation of those pieces. Uh, what do we have here? We have um, explaining, the, explaining the damage control decks, the order desks, or sorry, damage control deck, the order cards. Uh, what your C template zone template means, that's this a C zone template is this here. It shows you the, the firing angles and the turning angles. Um, aiming and smoke markers, so there's more than just these flooding tokens, there's a whole horde of different tokens which I have, um, if I can just excuse me, I have a whole bunch in there. Showing you just the examples. And then this is the, the phase of the turn, so here we have you know, determine the number of players, if, any, if, um, if passes, determine initiative, activating the ships, end of turn sequence, and it just breaks down each of these small phases into more descriptions. Uh, it tells you damage control, what the orders do, how you activate the orders, how you change the orders. Uh, on the cards, there's this uh, discipline here, and that is if you need to change your order, or if your ship is under fire, or under repair, or burning or flooding you need to pass uh, this score on 2d6 so you just roll 2d6 i got a nine it means the invincible gets to do an order so i can change my order to anything that i want let's say i'm on, let's say i'm on fire and i need to i need to 
get the repair. There is no repair now. Oh, damage control. Let's say I wanted to get the damage control order activated. I'll just put that on my ship card or beside my ship on the tabletop, whatever you like. And you get to do that. And I think instead of firing, I, I don't really recall, but it's an interesting way of changing your orders and doing stuff. Uh, and it just, it'll just explain to you down here um, the modifications to that role. So for instance, if you're on fire. Uh, here we have movement. It's a very easy movement. The, the sequence of what you do. Gunnery is in a, in a couple of pages. Well, one page of gunnery. One page of torpedoes. And they're very deadly in this game. Like in Victory at Sea as well. Um, and then this is explaining the game terms. Like the flagship. What What is a flagship? What is a destroyer leader? What is a coordinated strike? What are the floating tokens? Um, you know, dice rules. Rounding up or down. Um, and it says right here, if you have to round anything, you round up. Um, a lot of the ships will have, for instance, if I go back to the Invincible here, you'll see it has primary weapons, secondary weapon, tertiary weapons. And under secondary weapons, it says the word light. And it just explains you here what light means. Um, and what all the different torpedo room means. So this is just explaining all of your little... Um, what would these things be called? Your keywords. This is just explaining your keywords on your, your cards. And then what you do at the ending, the end of uh, the turn. And one of the things you do at the very end is you remove the, sink, the sunken ships. So the sunken ships, even the damage on these ships. So let's say you have, let's say we have the, the Sharn Horse here. And the Sharn Horse takes a couple of hits. It takes a couple of criticals during during its turn now it hasn't activated um what happens is the ship even if even if it goes to zero hull points and is sinking it stays on the table until the very end and then it can still do something just much reduced based on what it's been affected with i believe i think that's what it is i my ships haven't really in the few games that i've played the ships have basically died and they, they can't really do anything but um yeah, so it just explains. Here's the game tables, very important game tables. You've got your... Basically, you're going to have this in your hand all the time. This is probably the... Out of, out of this... That's a relatively small rule book. Out of this rule book, you're going to have this on you all the time. And that's it. So, not very, not very uh, big. Really easy to learn. Quite like the rules. You're going to have that gunnery table. Or not gunnery table. You're going to have the charts table. This and these cards will run the game for you. You don't need the rule book. You have this, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna print this out on uh, this size card. My eyesight is still good enough to do that. I'm gonna print this out, laminate it on that side card, and then that's a couple of players will have one of those each, and then the rule book can just go right over there. Uh, we'll take a look at the mission book. I printed off these separately because, you know, for now while I'm learning the game, I don't want to go with the missions. I want to just play my own little narrative scenarios just to get me the feel of it. But it gives you the missions. It says you have seven missions. Uh, no, you have six missions. Sorry. Explaining you the setup, the zone. Like any mission book you've seen before, I won't go through this in great detail, but you've seen there's a lot of um, neat scenarios. But it's just a mission book, which is still cool. And then we get into this meaty, meaty tome, which is the fleet lists. Which, if you're a meta gamer, I'm not, I'm not but I do enjoy thinking about the meta of the game of a, a game. Uh, this is going to be right up your alley. Now, in here, I have divided it into fleets. So this is the British fleet. Uh, this is the Medi North Seas fleet. Here, this is the Mediterranean British fleet. We have the Amer American Navy. We have the expansion, German Navy. And what I do is I just turn these over. And then here's your fleet construction lists. Just a little bit of fluff there. The types of fleets that you can have. You can have a war fleet, a battle fleet, a heavy reconnaissance fleet, and a raiding fleet. And uh, each one of these uh, fleet types, in here there will be a breakdown of what you can take. Ship types, you have battleships, battle cruisers, armored cruisers, light cruisers, destroyers, and then some unique ships. Uh, it's going to explain to you an example of um, of a, a fleet construction. So, for instance, these guys have settled on a 510 point limit. 
And I do find that this game doesn't really, because of the points of the ships, it doesn't lead into, oh, let's play a 200-point game, let's play a 500-point game. It's going to be something weird like 510 because you, you'll never be able to round off exactly with the points. But anyway, this is, a, this is telling you what you're going to do. Uh, you, first, you have to choose a flagship. So you have to choose one of these types if you're in a... Uh, what has he chosen here? He's chose a battle fleet. So you have to choose... In a battle fleet, you have to choose a flagship. And it has to be one of these five. So you've got the Queen Elizabeth, the Revenge, the Iron Duke, the King George, and the Orion. And because he's working with such a low coin, uh, point cost, he's gone with the cheapest flagship, which is the Orion. Then he can have... In his battle fleet, he can have zero to three. So he doesn't have to have any battleships, but he can have zero to three of them. And with only 305 points left, he's probably not going to be able to afford anything. And if he does, it's going to be, let's say he chooses the Ashen Corps or the, even the Canada or the another Orion. It's going to, he's going to have two ships in his whole fleet. Um, then what he's going to have is he's, he has to have a, screen, a screening squadron. So he has to have one to three squ uh, screening squadrons. Um, they can include a armored cruiser screen if he wants. But if he has one, he has to have between one and three cruisers in that squadron. He can have zero to two light uh, cruiser squadrons. And if he has one, he has to have one to three. He can't have four. He has to have one, two, or three light cruisers. So I hope you can understand, you know, here's a, a sample of what he's building. He's he's chosen a Minotaur, a Caledon, and a Bristol, leaving him with 111 points. Remember, he has the battleship, the Orion. And then he's chosen, he has to have a destroyer squadron. He has to have one destroyer squadron, and uh, maximum three. Um, so he's chosen the cheaper, I think this is a cheaper Admiralty class. Can't tell. But anyway, he's chosen these. He's chosen two of them at 53 points. Got five points left. He's a little under the limit, but that's, you can't fit anything in. And then you get into the types of fleets. This is the battle fleet. Your flagships, your battleships, what you can choose. You know, your screening squadrons, your square destroyer squadrons. Now you have your reconnaissance fleet. Your flagship will be totally different, whereas in the battle fleet, it's an actual dreadnought. In the in the Reconnaissance Squadron is a battle cruiser, so your your flagship for your battle uh, heavy reconnaissance squadron has to be the HMS Lion, and then you have your various cruisers, armored cruisers, destroyers. Now you have the Mediterranean Raiding Fleet, and in the Mediterranean Raiding Fleet, your flagship has to be either the Indefatigable or the Invincible, and various other types. You don't get any of the cool big ships, but you get you know, the armored cruisers and some the early battle cruisers. You've got your destroyers, your war fleet. In your war fleet, this is the big gun. This is, you have to choose one of the big ships, Queen Elizabeth, Revenge, or Iron Duke. And then your battleships. So you can see what's, what, what they're aiming for here. They're aiming for um, a sort of a fleet meta. We can continue on. I'm not going to show you the whole thing. I just want to give you an idea of what it is that you can get. Um, and here you have broken down into a 1916 division fleet or battle fleet where it's the Marlboro Battleships Revenge, Asian Court Hercules and we can go on and on and on so in here there's Germans, there's Americans you know here's the, the Germans another example of creating a fleet and they have their battle fleet and they have to have their flagship has to be uh, the Bayer, the Koenig, the Kaiser, the Helgoland, the Nassau, or the Deutschland. They have a lot more um, choices in their battle fleet um, flagship. And then it just, goes, it just goes on and on and on. There is just so many. There is, um, what do we have here? We have the Austrians, I think, or the Italians and Austrians in here. Yeah, the Italians. I mean, we can go on and on, but this is just a quick look at the actual books. So there's the the fleet books. So I've shown you the fleet books, the mission book, kind of, the rule book, kind of, and some of the ship cards we're going to get into in more detail in a minute. I've shown you the damage deck that you get for critical hits, some of the tokens. There's also smoke markers, 
all kinds of things. And then the all important order cards. <coughs> Just take a look at this game, go to their Facebook page, um, you know, inquire about it, message them if you want to get into this game. But it's really cool. Like if you like Flames of War or Warhammer 40k or or any of those types of I would say meta type games, you're gonna love this. If World War One Naval is your or the Age of Dreadnoughts is it your cup of tea at all, you're gonna really love this game. And again, like I said before, you don't need the models. You can just get the rules if you need them, but it comes as a package for for me it was $104 Canadian and it's been a a, a bargain, just a bargain. Anyway, uh, that's it for now. Just a 15-minute video just to show you the actual contents of the game. Uh, next video, I'll be getting into the more in-depth on the actual cards and showing you and describing a little bit of the difference between each of the ships. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing, and we'll see you again.